animation player, mesh, timer, twin, and all of other classes in Godot, yes, they are all inherited from object class. Object class is the base class for all other classes in Godot. Basically, object class is one of the foundation on which Godot is built on top of that. So now imagine you have an object in your game which has some certain functionality. That object could be an animation player, timer, a physics object or anything else. So what common feature all of these objects have? So to cut the long story short, extendability, properties, notification, and signals. These are the most important ones, and yeah, I'm going to explain about these. First of all, we should be able to extend our object feature and add some feature to it. Basically, object class give us the ability to attach an script to it and then extend its feature. This is one of the most important things that object class is responsible for that. Next, all of the object classes contain some properties, like, for example, speed, max speed, time, health, color, and many other things. Yes, I know what some of you are thinking right now. You say these are just some data which we store in the memory, just like any ordinary data in other programming language. But it is not like that. Let me explain better. Imagine you open a Godot engine and you create a player for your game. It has a property like a speed, which is the current speed of the player, and max speed, which limits the speed of the player to a certain number. Player speed is calculated in runtime according to the keyboard input. But the max speed is not calculated on runtime and you define that. And it is much easier if you can change this number in editor. Like that. And now you want to close Godot. Which of these variables should be saved? Obviously we want to save max speed because we don't want to define it each time we open Godot. But we don't need to save a speed because it's calculated in runtime. So how should we know how to handle these properties? Basically, each time we create a property, we create a property info which define how to handle these properties. This property info contains this information. Name, which is a string and it's contained the name of the property. Type, which is a type of the property which can be integer, boolean, a string and so on. And each of these type associated with the integer number which you can find in Godot documentation. Usage. This will define how you want to handle this property. For example, if you add property users storage, this will tell to store the variable when you close Godot. Property usage editor, this will show the property in Godot editor. Each of this usage is associated with an integer number. And if I show them in a binary format, they look like this. Now if I use bitwise or operator between these two usage, the result number become like this. And in this way, I can have multiple usage combined. Next information are hint and hint string. These two will give Godot editor some hint to how to show this property. For example, if I define hint to be property hint resource type, I will tell Godot that this property is some kind of resource and Godot will show it in editor like this. And now if I define hint string to be mesh, which is a name of the class in Godot, Godot will let me to assign all classes which inherit from mesh to my property. There are a lot of ways which you can define your property, which I cannot explain all of them in this video. For example, you can define an enum in this way. I suggest you to take a look at the Godot documentation and see all possible value for type, usage, and hint. So after you create a property info, it will be stored in a list. You can get that list by calling getPropertyList function. Let me show you that in Godot. Here in Godot, I created a scene with a node as root and I attach a script to it. In ready function, I grab output of getPropertyList. And if I print that, it will show me all of the property which node has. So let us create a new property. I create a new property with the name of my var, which is an integer. And to find this property inside the Godot property list, I write a small piece of code. So this is my property, and as you can see, it's defined those information automatically, which we mentioned in the form of the dictionary. Now what if I export my variable? Then this variable will be shown in Godot editor. Well, in Godot 4, there are a lot of ways which you can export your variable. I suggest you to take a look in the Godot documentation. 
And if I now grab my property again, as you can see, Godot automatically changed the usage, which is a strange number because it is a combination of the multiple number, but it has been changed. Some of you may be already used export in your Godot project, but knowing all of these is really important because you understand how Godot internally works. So up to now, we know every time I define a variable, Godot automatically add a property info to my property list. Now this is the interesting part. What if I can change the property list directly inside Godot? This is how you can do it. You define a function in GDScript which is called getPropertyList. Godot expects that this function will return an array of dictionary which contain property info. And then it is going to add this result with the original property list which had earlier. So let's do it in Godot. First of all, in this case, it is much better to use tool option. In this way, you tell Godot to run this code in editor. In Godot 4, sometimes when you use tool option, you should restart Godot or close and open the scene to get that working. Then I define a variable which is called isPlayer and it is a boolean. Well, I define a setter function for it and here I'm going to call this function notify property list change. This is going to tell Godot to recheck the property list because it might be changed. And now if I change the value of is player in editor, here in editor, as you can see, my code will run. Now here I define another variable, which is called can shoot, which is also a boolean. So now I define function underscore get property list, which we talk about. Now here I define an array and I append to this array a dictionary, which is contain my property info. Basically what I want to do is whenever is player is true, I want to my variable can shoot show in editor section. So in this case, if the is player is not true, I set this dictionary like this. Name of the property is can shoot, type is type bool, and usage, I'll set it to property usage none. And here when the player is true, I do the same thing, just I change the usage to property usage editor. If you want to save this property when you close Godot, you should also add property usage storage and combine it with the property usage editor with or bitwise operator. So now let's check that. Whenever I set the value of is player true, other variable can should show in editor. And when I set that to the false, it's going to disappear in editor. Now let's try another more complex example. Imagine your player can have three types. Police, Pilot, and Soldier. I define this in the form of the packed string array. Now in underscore get property list function, if the player is true, I look through player type and I add for each element a boolean property, like before. Well now if I set the player to true, this will add all of this player type in editor. And if I click on one of them, nothing will happen. Because this is a fake variable, and boolean variable with the name of the police, pilot, and soldier actually not exist. Each time I click on one of these, Godot is going to call a function which is called set. But as this variable not exists, it will be do nothing. But another interesting thing is that you can override the behavior of the set function with another function which is called underscore set. Let me show you what I mean. In my script, now I create a function which is called underscore set property and value. I printed the property and value. Now if I click on one of my boolean, as you can see, Godot try to change my value. But there is no rule to set this variable. And Godot will do nothing and nothing will change. So let us define some rule for that. I create another variable which is called current player type which is a string. Now in underscore set function, I will tell if this property exists in my player type array, then set the current player type to that. And I print current player type. And now if I click on one of my boolean, as you can see, current player type will change to that. But in editor, still nothing will change. Because Godot editor each time want to get that property, use another function which is called get. And as our variable does not exist in reality, nothing will happen. But you can also change the get behavior with underscore get function. Let's define that in GDScript. Like underscore set function here, also I say if this property exists in player type array, then return property equal equal to current player type. This will return true if the property is equal to the current player type. And if they are not equal, it's going to return false. And now if I click on my boolean variable, let's see what will happen. 
So as you can see how much Godot can be flexible. Okay, next I want to talk about notification. Every object in Godot implement a notification method. Some of these notification are ready, enter tree, exit tree, process, which maybe you already familiar with some of them. Each of these notification is associated with an integer constant. One way to grab this notification is by calling this function in GDScript. You can also grab them with another function which is called underscore notification. In this function, what is an integer number which is the same as integer constant correspond to that notification. For example, here if I print what and I run it, it will show us all the notification which is sent to this object. Now if I add underscore process function in my GD script, which is a notification corresponding to game loop, my console print a lot of 17 number because 17 correspond to game loop notification. Next important thing which is implemented by object class is signal. Each object can send a signal or it can receive signal. And this feature is widely used in Godot. Signal itself is a big topic which need a separate video and there are a lot of video on YouTube about that. Now you might ask does object do memory management or not? And the shortest answer possible is no. Some of the classes which inherit from object class manage memory, like rip count, but object itself does not manage memory. Let me show you in code. I create a new script and I change the inherit type from node to object. And here I add init function. Each time any object is created, it will call underscore init function. And you can use that like a constructor. Then I add underscore notification function and I will say if what is equal to notification pre-delete print object is deleted. Each object before being deleted send this notification which you can use that as a destructor. Now in ready function I load my script and create a new instance of it. And as you can see my object is created but it's not deleted automatically. So be careful about that. If you use object class, you are responsible to delete that. And if you want to delete that, you should call free function. And as you can see, it is deleted now. If you need some kind of object class which manage memory itself, you can use rep count class, which inherit from object. If in my script I change the inheritance type from object to ref count and I run my code without pre, as you can see, it deleted itself automatically. If you want to know more about ref count, I created a video about that, which I will put a link to that in the description. Well, that was about object class. I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you have any question, write in the comment section. Have a good time. Until the next video, bye.